Welcome to Grow Dinner Aquaponics in our backyard greenhouse. We're urban farmers here in Zone 7. I want to talk to you today about releasing fish into your system and what you need to do to get prepared for that. And I want to show you one of the most important things that you need to try to understand is pH. To work with pH, we're going to be working with eggshells, a lemon and a lime, some pantyhose, and a pair of scissors. That's what I'm going to show you today so that you can have healthy plants. If you don't have healthy pH, you will not have healthy fish, you won't have healthy cucumbers like these here in full bloom, Swiss chard, squash that I've been picking off of for a month, tomato plants blooming. We've got lots of healthy plants. That comes from a healthy pH base. And to understand pH is really simple. It's about like hot and cold water. And I want to show you what you can do and how to work with your pH. One of the main things you've got to do is understand pH and how to move it around so that you can have healthy fish, especially when you're starting a new system. And remember, the more water volume you have, the more stable your pH will always be. Okay, one thing I like to do before releasing any fish is I like to feed the fish that are already in the tank. So let's throw a little duckweed in there and get those fish up and get them filled up so they don't bother our little fish because we're going to be mixing some big fish with some very small fish. Okay, they're not going to come up and eat. They're a little camera shot. Okay, you want to ask your fish supplier, especially if you're picking them up, I recommend that you take a cooler with you and you just set this whole bag down in the cooler. One of the things you want to know, your fish supplier, if he's actually installing oxygen inside the bag. If he does not add oxygen inside the bag, your fish have a very short life inside this bag. So what we'll do is we're going to just drop this down in our tank. We're going to let that sit. Now the reason we want to do that is because we want to acclimate the temperature of the bag with the fish in it to our tank temperature. And the way to do that is just let it set and float. Okay, while these fish are getting acclimated to the water temperature, I want to explain to you the basics of pH. pH is a way to measure acidic and basics are two extremes that describe chemicals in the water. Just like hot and cold are two extremes that describe temperature. Mixing acidics and basics can cancel out their extreme effects, much like mixing hot and cold water can even out the water temperature. A substance that is either acidic or basic is neutral. The pH scale measures how acidic or basic a substance is. It ranges from 0 to 14. The pH of 7 is neutral. A pH less than 7 is acidic, and a pH greater than 7 is basic. Each whole pH value below 7 is 10 times more acidic than the next higher value. For example, a pH of 4 is 10 times more acidic than a pH of 5. And the same holds true for pH values above 7, each of which is 10 times more alkaline, another way to say basic, than the next lower whole value. For example, a pH of 10 is 10 times more alkaline than a pH of 9. The best natural way to stabilize pH is by doing one-third water change to your system. If that is not feasible or you choose to conserve water, and I want to show you how to do that to prevent water changing so we can conserve water. Okay, pH is so important because the fish will be stressing, your plants will be stressing. Your neutral pH is going to hit right at 7, so when you do your water test, you want to keep that as close to 7 as possible. Now some plants will actually can strive more with a higher or lower pH, but overall average you want to keep a 7 neutral. Now your fish are always going to like a neutral pH, and how we do that organically is we use eggshells, a lemon, or lime. These are the two methods that I use. If you have a low pH, say you're hitting in the 6 range or the 5 range and you want to move it back to a 7, what I find the organic way to do that is take some eggshells, Stick them in the microwave for 30 seconds. And what that will do is that will dry up the skin inside, kills any bacteria inside the eggs, inside the shells. Pull that out. We do not want to put that inside of our pantyhose. And you'll just pull this out of each one. 
The eggs have a natural pH of around 8. So we're looking for a 7. So what you do is you pull the skins out. Sometimes they're a little tough to get out. Sometimes they'll just pull right out. You just pull all your skin out. Whoop, that one stuck to the plate. By the way, these are organic eggs from our chickens. We have free-range chickens that walk around and sneak into our garden when they get the opportunity. Okay, we got this pulled out. Now what do we want to do with these? We want to crush them. Okay, what we want to do is take a lady's pantyhose. These things have lots of use in the aquaponic systems. I use them quite regularly. I'll show you some other good things you can do with them. Okay. Open them up. Down to the foot. And just crush up some eggshells. Again, eggshells have a pH of 8, and we're looking for a 7. So this is going to actually bring up our pH. It is a slow and safe process, too. It doesn't jump overnight because extreme pH swings will stress fish drastically. Okay, get your eggshells down in the foot. Really simple. Tie a knot. Okay. Okay, what we're going to do with this pantyhose with our eggshells now, and remember this is a pH of 8, so this is going to bring our pH up. We're just going to dig out in our bed and dig a hole right where the water inlet is. We're going to drop that down inside of there, cover it up with gravel, and leave one little corner here so that we don't forget where it's at. Now, that will raise the pH in a system, a very slow process, which is very healthy for the fish. Hey, that's an easy way to raise pH up. The water will run over our pantyhose, the eggshells will deteriorate. As they deteriorate, they will bring the pH up. Let's talk about how to lower our pH. Two organic ways to lower pH in water. One would be a lime, and one would be a lemon. Personally, I only use lemon in drastic, drastic situations because the lemon has a pH of 2.3, which that means that you could drop your pH so drastically that you could actually stress your fish and death could occur. So try to stay away from the lemons, but if that's all you've got, it will work. I try to only use lime. Now, I've got a 250-gallon tank I'm going to be comparing this to. What I typically do, lime has a pH of 4.0, so what I will do is I will slice the lime, squeeze out about a half a teaspoon. I'll drop a half a teaspoon into this tank and see where it goes. Wait a couple of days and then retest. Now, let's just say that you've gotten out of control with your pH and you've put too much lime in it. You can't be patient and wait for it to stabilize. Then what you can do in a drastic situation, I do not recommend this, but if you've used too much lime or too much lemon, and you've dropped your pH to the point you're stressing your fish and you're scared death will occur, there is a solution for that to keep from losing your fish. One, do a partial water change. If partial water change is not an option, then you can't use baking soda. Just a tiny tap of baking soda, there again, less than a half a teaspoon, will stabilize your tank again. But that is in the most extreme circumstances to use baking soda. Try to stick with this, with the lemon juice, in the line. It's very simple. Half a teaspoon for about 250 gallons will drop your pH. This is a pH of 4. Remember that pH balances out like hot and cold water. So when you drop in a 4 and you have a pH of 8, a half a teaspoon in 250 gallons is probably going to drop you somewhere around 7. Okay, those two will get you to the lower point. 
the eggshells will bring you back up. Okay, I hope this helps you understand pH because pH it has a important factor to doing aquaponics to have healthy plants and to have healthy fish. And I'm sure by now our fish are probably getting close to being acclimated to our water. So let's do a release and get these tilapia in here swimming. I'm going to show you one more time about what size fish I'm releasing here. Oh. Hey, they're nice size fish. Okay. I'm going to pull the rubber band as I get a hold of one corner of the bag. And I release. Okay, I want to give you some idea of what kind of expect from your tilapia and growth. Okay, this is a year old fish. It's going to weigh in somewhere around a pound and a half to two pounds. We don't want to keep him out very long. That's about a year old fish. Another trick for the pantyhose since we had them out. If your tank actually gets really foggy and you're getting a lot of solids and your filter system is not keeping up with whatever kind of filter, if you're running a filter or not, but you have a lot of solids in your system and would like to clean it up, it's really simple. You can take this pantyhose, put it around one of your water inlets, drop a zip tie around it, let the water run through the pantyhose, we don't get a lot of solids in our system. We have a pretty good filter system set up. We've been doing this for a long time. So, but new, new systems typically will have some issues with solids, especially if you're new at farming with aquaponics, and that's a way to help clean up your system. And of course, you can take the solids from the pantyhose and dump it into your duckweed beds and things of that nature. I hope this helps with balancing your pH. Remember, a partial water change is always the best. In most cases, I just don't do that because it's so easy to make pH swing with the lime and some eggshells. But I hope this does help with your system, helps get you a good balanced system. pH will typically balance itself out if you have the time and just be patient. Um, but you can always swing it with the products I've shown you today and get a good organic result from it. Now, as far as releasing your fish, when you get fish in to go into your system, it's really simple. Keep an eye on them for the first couple of days. Check your water about every three days. And then after that, start checking it about once a week to make sure that your fish are settling into a good, healthy environment. You never want to wait until you receive your fish to start balancing pH. pH is something that needs to be balanced before your fish arrive. And that will also help get you started off on a good start. And you'll have good, healthy plants. And you can be harvesting squash and tomatoes and things as we do here at Grow Dinner Aquaponics. We are urban farmers and this is our backyard greenhouse and I'd like to thank you for joining us. And join us for more videos here at Grow Dinner Aquaponics. And if you ever have questions or comments, please leave them on the bottom of the video and I'll be more than glad to try to answer them the best I can. And thanks again for joining us.